we're going to learn how to make this 3D printable fidget slider inside Fusion 360. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the software and get right to it. Okay, so by now you should have opened up a blank new canvas within Fusion 360. From here, we're going to create a total of three components. So to do that, let's hover over to create new components and let's go ahead and name this to twist fidget and then press OK. From here, let's create two additional components. Now, these components are going to be nested under the host component here. Click on Create, New Components, and let's go ahead and name this to Twist. Then toggling on the top level component once again, Create, New Components, and let's go ahead and name this to Slider. Press OK. We're first going to start off with the, uh, the actual coil itself, more specifically the twist portion. That's the part that actually doesn't move um, between the slider. So that's the static piece that actually doesn't move. So to do that, we're going to click on the twist component here, toggle that back on, click on creates. We're going to look for this feature called coil. Selecting coil from the bottom, we're going to select the bottom plane. From the center, drag this out. Now I'm going to drag this out to around 60 millimeters, which is a little under three inches. Then from here, once you click your mouse, you'll see you're presented with basically a coil. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can actually extend this coil. So I can drag this up. I can make this taller. I can make it smaller. I can actually increase the width of this, the kind of like the size of this. Um, I could you know, basically make it even thicker if I wanted to. And whenever I make adjustments here, it's going to reflect on my dialog box here on the right hand side. For now, I'm going to go ahead and set it to the values that we have for this video. So I'm just going to extend this up to let's just say 120 millimeters. Then I'm going to set the revolutions to 2. And I'm also going to change this section size to around, let's just say, 12. Once that's done, press OK. Now what we need to do here is to create multiple bodies of this exact same coil. So we're not going to go in here and just create more coils. Instead, we're going to use this feature called Circular Pattern. To do that, we're going to press S on our keyboard, type in Circular Pattern, then selecting the coil within our timeline which is the last feature we just made, and then selecting the axis, which is gonna be the Z axis or this blue line down the middle. And now you can see there's a ton of different outlines of the coil we just made. Now I'm gonna set the quantity here to let's just say around eight, uh, maybe around five instead. Let's see, I more so want the amount of coils to just be enough where they're actually touching each other. So around five is when they start to touch, but six for sure is when they start to intersect. And that's what I'm looking for here. Once I'm happy with my design, I'm going to set the object type to features. Then we have the objects and the axes and the distribution to full and the quantity sent to six compute type set to adjust and everything checks out. So once we press OK, now we have the coil inside Fusion 316. Now, as you may have noticed, you can see we're left with these kind of like these top ends for the very top of the coil and as well as for the bottom. And we actually don't even need that. So we actually need to go ahead and section that off and basically cut it, cut it off. So to do that, we're gonna hover over to the left-hand side, click on our components, click on bodies. And what we wanna do here is combine all of these bodies before we actually make the cutouts. So to do that, we're gonna press S on our keyboard, which brings up the design shortcuts, type in combine, then select the first feature here, which is this blue icon. Then we're gonna go ahead and select the top body here on the left-hand side, and then just select all the remaining ones. From here, you can see that it might change to either a cut operation. If it does, we wanna change this to join. And then once we have that, make sure keep tools is toggled off and press OK. Now, if you're curious about what the keep tools option meant, basically that means that if we were to keep this on, this would basically keep the bodies here on the left hand side. We actually don't want to have those bodies. We actually want them merged. So if we turn this off, you can see that now it's just one solid body. That's what we're looking for. From here, let's go ahead and rename this to twist and press OK. Now we can go ahead and actually slice the top and as well as the bottom piece off. To do that, we're going to press S on our keyboard, which brings up the design shortcuts, type in offset. And what I'm looking for is for offset plane. Then I'm going to select the bottom plane here. You can barely see it within our canvas here down below. Uh, and if you want a better view, you can actually turn on origin here, select the bottom canvas here or the bottom plane, excuse me, and then just kind of drag this up. Now, what I want to do is just drag this up so where it 
basically almost touches the very top. So as I drag this up just around, let's just say 115, 110-ish, you can see it starts to meet right at the very top, but I wanna make sure this actually cuts straight through. So I'm gonna set this to around 110, press enter, and now we have our construction plane here. And we're actually gonna use this construction plane to actually create a cutout through our coils here. To do that, we're gonna press S on our keyboard, type in split body. Then we're gonna select the first option here, which is this blue icon. We're gonna go ahead and select the bodies, which is the bodies we just combined with Infusion. Then select the splitting tools, which is the construction plane. And once we press okay, you can see now we made a cutout from the very top and the bottom. If we're to turn off twist one, you can see now we have a complete cutout of our twist at the very top. Now let's go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for the bottom. We can go ahead and turn off the top construction plane we just created, hovering over to the left, plane, then pressing S on our keyboard, type in offset, plane once again, then selecting the bottom plane, we can go ahead and kind of drag this up. Now you want to use your kind of like the best of your ability to kind of match this up. So I say around, let's just say six millimeters, seven, I'd say around seven is a good match there. And we can go ahead and press enter. From here, press S, type in split body, selecting the bodies once again, then the splitting tools, which is the construction plane, and then create your cut. From here, we can turn off twist two, which is that new cutout, or excuse me, the original one, and then just kind of rename this as the new one. So twist original. And there you have it. Now you have the cutout for the bottom and as well as the cutout for the top. And that's gonna act as our coil or the piece that's gonna allow the fidget to kind of slide all the way down. The next thing we need to do is to create the slider for our design. To do that, we're gonna click on slider, which is the component here. Then we're gonna click on create sketch. From here, what we wanna do here is use the face here at the very top to kind of create our sketch. Selecting the top face, then by using center diameter circle, we're gonna go ahead and start from the origin, drag this out, and I'm gonna drag this out to around 76 millimeters. From here, what we're gonna do is drag out this body going down. To do that, we're gonna press E, select all of these profiles, and then just drag this down. I'm gonna drag this down to let's just say negative 20 millimeters, make sure the operation is set to new body, and press OK. Now we have this slider intersecting with our coil down the center. Now we need to create a cutout that matches with the, basically the curvature of our coil because we want this thing, the slider, more specifically to kind of slide all the way through. Now to do that, we're gonna press S on our keyboard, type in combine, and what we're gonna use is the combine feature once again. Now with this feature, we're actually gonna select the slider, then the coil, then set the operation to cut. And as you can see now, there is a cutout for our slider to kind of slide down. Make sure the operation is set to keep tools, or excuse me, make sure to keep tools is turned off, new components turned off, and press OK. Now we can go ahead and toggle this body in the middle, turn it off, because we actually don't need it. And there you have it. Now you have your twist. Oops, where did it turn off? Excuse me, actually keep it turned on. My apologies. Keep it turned on. And now you have the original and then the slider with infusion. Now, if you were to notice and just kind of show you as an example, you don't have to do this. If I were to go ahead and use a section analysis, what we're really looking for is for our slider to kind of match along the grooves of our coil in the center. Now, as you may have noticed here, you can see that these two faces are pretty much touching. So if we were to 3D print this, this would not fit by any means. So we actually need to create some sort of clearance for this. So that way our coil or our slider is able to kind of slide all the way down. Now to do that, what we need to do here is actually turn off the body for the twist and let's work on our slider here. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all my sketches since we won't need it. And what I wanna do is select all of these faces inside. I'm gonna right click, press pull, and I'm gonna press pull this by negative 0.4 millimeters. And what I wanna do here is just go all the way around our design. I'm gonna hold command on Mac. I believe it's on Windows, it's control. And then just select all of the faces inside and take your time with this. Just select all the faces inside with your press pull feature activated. And now you can see 
now we have our cutout with a 0.4 clearance in the center. And you can see I'm holding command. And you can see this is before and this is after. If you want a much more wider gap, meaning you want the slider to slide down a bit more smoothly, um, I would say negative 0.6 would work just fine or a 0.8. Keep in mind the wider you go, the more or the faster it's gonna slide down. So I'm gonna set this to a 0.4 and press okay. Now, if we're to turn on the original one and then use our section analysis, you can now see there's a little bit of a clearance down below in the center, and that's what we're looking for here. We want this gap here so our slider can slide down and basically any uh, any resistance, that's like the drag of it. From here, let's go ahead and kind of finish this up and create the top piece here, kind of like that fidgeting effect that you see most on most fidget patterns on stuff like this. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and toggle on twist one, then click on create sketch, select the top face, and then clicking on center diameter circle. From here, from the origin, drag this out. I'm gonna set this to around 76 as well. Then pressing E on our keyboard, selecting all of the faces or the profiles here. Drag this up. I'm gonna set this to around, let's just say 20 millimeters, and I'm gonna set the operation to join. Now with this complete, the next thing we want to do here is turn off our slider since we won't need it. And we want to go ahead and create some sort of pattern on the sides of this cylinder here. Now, this is not really important because this design is pretty much complete. But if you want some sort of fidgeting, textured, or pattern, which you'll see in most designs like this, we're going to go ahead and create that right now. So to do that, we're going to press S on our keyboard, type in Tangent Plane. And what we're going to use is this feature called Tangent Plane with Infusion, which allows us to create a plane on a cylinder which then allows us to create a sketch, which we can emboss into a design that's rounded instead of flat. So to do that, we're gonna click on Create Sketch, then select the plane we just created, and let's go ahead and draw out, just say a center rectangle. Then from the center, we're just gonna create a center rectangle, and I'm gonna set this to around five by five. Now with that completed, we're gonna press S on our keyboard, type in emboss, and then we're gonna select this sketch profile we just made, select the face, which is the cylinder, and now you can see we have an emboss. Now the difference between emboss and extrude is that this emboss actually matches the curvature of our design, whereas an extrude just basically extrudes the face, not considering the curvature of our cylinder. As you can see with our depth here at two millimeters, we can also set this to deboss and actually cut into it. For now, I'm gonna set the effect to emboss, we can actually create a rotation angle if we wanted to, and then press OK. Now, to make sure there's some continuity here, I'm going to make sure that the rotation angle is kind of below the edge of our cylinder here. And then what we can do to make this 3D printable, press S, type in chamfer, then select all the edges here on our emboss. Emboss that in, let's just say one, two, so two looks good, press Enter. Now we wanna use the circular pattern feature once again, pressing S, type in circular pattern. We're gonna go ahead and select the last two features within our timeline, select the axis, which is gonna be this sort of edge axis here on the cylinder. And then we can increase the quantity to as many as we want to kind of increase the value of the amount of little fidgets that we have on our cylinder here. And there you have it. With that said, that pretty much wraps up today's video. In this video, we've learned how to create coils, how to combine them, and more specifically, how to create cutouts and clearances for designs for 3D printing, and as well as how to make this really cool fidget slider inside Fusion 360. If you guys wanna get access to more tutorials, guides, and resources specifically for 3D printing, and wanna learn how to get picture-perfect prints, regardless of your skill level, make sure to check out the 14-Day Design Challenge, where I show you exactly how to create your own articulated and functional designs for 3D printing. You can find the link with link in the description, but with that said, make sure to like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.